Friends of mine in my neighborhood were like, yo, we're gonna go out and write on trains and walls and whatever else they were into at that time. And they came to me because I was already known for being an artist. It all happened one summer night, 30 something years ago. So I became that person then. And these guys only wrote graffiti for that summer. I continued doing it for the rest of my life. Hey, what's up? This is Seth coming to you live from New York City. I'm here with Tops, and this is Project 70, Meet the Artist. Sick, let's just do it one more. All right, that was great, come on. <laughs> My first interests and passions as a child, I would say watching all the great cartoons of my era. You know, I'm a 70s kid, so anything from Bugs Bunny, Woody Woodpecker on up gave me that imagination. And a true story I've told before was I didn't know that I was an artist until my first day of kindergarten. The teacher asked us, hey, kids, we're all gonna draw our favorite animal today. I said, oh yeah, bet. So I'm gonna draw a tiger, I like tiger. So boom, I, I, I draw it up. I'm looking around at all the other kids and they're looking at triangles and squares with stick legs and all of this. And I'm drawing like what would be for a little kid, a proper tiger with stripes and everything. And then we all went and put them on the wall. And the teacher was like, who did this one right here? And pointed to mine. I got so nervous, like I thought I did something wrong. She made me stand up. So we got an artist in the class. I studied graffiti as a young man, so it wasn't that I just jumped in and became this person. I struggled for years, but I also watched and learned, and I'm still discovering different things and seeing even from younger generations that come out, things that inspire me. So it's a process, and it's something that as a young person getting into writing graffiti, I wouldn't say just get out there and start writing on shit, that's what we do. It's way deeper than that. Like there's a whole lineage, there's a history to it in building up and understanding why and who came before you and the importance of assembling and the composition and how you put things together properly. And once you get that, you can decipher one from the next. So that's something that I was really big on is what makes this stand out? What are the impact factors and why? In the beginning, writing with my neighborhood friends, it was just reckless abandonment of vandalism, which has its art in itself, right? But I wanted to go further. I would explain my style as traditional New York. My style can be somewhat aggressive, using hard edges and angles to get my point across, but also I soften it with the use of color. When I set out to paint or create a new painting, the motivation could be a number of things. It could be as simple as a new color that I've never seen or used. It could be what's happening now in the world. But moreover than not, it's just flexing the muscle and getting something out, almost like a runner runs. If I don't do it, I feel like I'm not completing myself. I have to constantly get this out of my system. I don't have to have a whole manuscript that goes along with it that says, I did this today because. Some of it is just pure, just wreck. It's, that's what happened today. That's what I was feeling, you know. But yes, if you have an exhibition coming or you're working towards something, you want to then create work that would be more cohesive and would go together. And I prefer to have a mission. So then I can gear my mind to saying, okay, well, this is what I'm working on and collectively how can I make this work and what's gonna be different from what I did before. You're constantly battling yourself, right? That's how I looked at it. I'm trying to be a better me. I'm not worried about what's out there though. What's out there inspires me and pushes it because the truth is if I was the only one writing graffiti, I don't think I would last. I need everyone else out here doing it and being creative to motivate me every day. What's your first awareness of Tops? And you collected as a kid, 
Strictly Baseball in the 70s, Topps was number one. We would get them by the box. It wasn't no Charlie and the Chocolate Factory trying to get that one golden ticket. And our goal as kids was to get the complete Yankee team. And then flipping cards with other kids in school to take their cards and add that to the collection. So as a kid, Tops and baseball cards was a big everyday thing, bringing them to school. I distinctly remember losing quite a few cards and gaining quite a few cards. So it's been part of my life since I can remember. Baseball for me was one of those primary sports that we would meet up and play baseball, football, basketball, but baseball being the primary one. But it wasn't until as a young kid, my father took me and my brother to a Yankee game, mid 70s, Yankees, Blue Jays. And that's where I was like, oh, this is the shit. This was like going to Disney World. When I got the call to be part of the Topps Project 70, I was like, how, how does this work? So I looked it up and I saw what people were doing. I was like, I could pretty much do what I do. It's almost like the world had become full circle. I just wish my father was still alive to see it. He would shit, he would be like, oh my God, you know, baseball was his thing and graffiti's my thing. Like my brother bugs out on it and other friends that I grew up with, it, they think, oh shit, Sess is doing tops cars. They're waiting to see me pull up in a Ferrari now. Like, oh, he made it. Not that I'm not, but this was like getting called up to the major leagues, right? Like this is Americana. This is everything you grew up with. I stuck with what I believed in, and here comes the things from my childhood coming back, welcoming me in. That's how I looked at it. Each card that I do, I really take the time and investigate the player and which way can we go with this. I'm just not knocking them out. I think to myself, I want the player to look at it and be happy. I want Tops to be happy. I want the baseball fanatic or card collector to be happy, and me as an artist. I don't make it about me. It's bigger than me. Well, for the ones that I'm hand drawing, I create like thumbnails and I say, well, how can I make this player come into a world that I want to create? Where would he fit in? Like for Mike Trout, I came across several pictures of him where I thought his name Trout was like really impressive in the back and the way he was like looking off to the side, that says it all with his number, everyone's going to identify with that. And then I created this kind of underwater scene playing on the word Trout as a big fish. And then I drew Jaws, which is one of my favorite movies. Instead of Jaws, it said Mike across the top. So he's the big fish. Okay, here's the best one of all. The Mickey Mantle card I did. Tops enthusiast, I'm talking to you. I think I did a 1956 Mickey Mantle. There was no Mickey Mantle in 1956. They skipped over that year. He didn't actually get a card. So I'm giving you that Mickey Mantle that you couldn't get. That was deep. So not only is it the artwork, I go the full spectrum. I'm at the year, the player, the concept, the application. I think of the whole thing in front of me. If I could go back in time, I would tell myself, stick with it. You know, there were times where being arrested, being put in situations, really people dictating to you how life is supposed to be, what I should be, really had no bearing on the person I became. And I look back to that, to those people who said those things, they celebrate me today when back then they just didn't understand. So I've met these people later in life. They're like, wow, you really stuck with what you did. So if I could go back, and I often think about it. I say, just take it slow. You're gonna get there, believe in what you do, and you just gotta own it and start from right now and make it the best every chance you got. Cause this ain't no dress rehearsal. This is the real shit. So the young me, I think he would bug out. He would stand right here next to me like, oh shit, are we gonna do this shit? We're here. I'm here with Tops, Project 70. Okay, let's try it again. Let's take it from the top of the key. <laughs> Yo, I was serious. doing good. I felt like I was yeah. missing one more thing. Just chop this, put it all together. <laughs> <laughs>
What's up? It's King Saladin. I'm Claw Money. Hey, what's up? This is Seth. I'm here with Tops. And this is Project 70. Meet the artist. I'm really like a professional. I can like, I can do this. <laughs>